One of the staples of any escape game is locked boxes. Uh, they let you nest clues in there, they let you direct the game flow of any given game so that you have to solve puzzle A, which gets you the key to puzzle B, unlock that, and that will be your clue for puzzle C. Um, it's really helpful with flow. With the space game, there are no padlocks in space. Just no, it's just, that's just weak. It takes you out of the game and no. So what we came up with, instead of having a key or a numerical padlock, is the, uh, the space key. Which, when the proper key is placed in the lock, all kinds of fun lighting effects happen, and your box opens up. I found a problem with the electronic keys that I'm working on right now for the engineer's box um, puzzle thing. So we have our, these guys here, uh, this is just a four pin connector, uh, it like would be on any piece of electronics. These were uh, off of a revamp of the CNC machine that never happened, so we had some laying around to experiment with. And they go into a four pin plug. Um, cool thing about this is we can wire these up however we want and the original idea was just real simple that one of these gets shorted over and then actually one of these rather uh, on the key side gets shorted over and uh, those two pins come out of the plug side and then are basically the switch on a relay so you put the key in and the relay pops it's pretty simple but then we put these little acrylic guys on the back and I was like wouldn't it be cooler if these lit up and we lit them up and it's cooler, so now I have to make this work. Uh, version 1 works if you only have one key that can only go into one lock, it's fine. Once you have more than one key that can go into more than one lock, you run into the risk of you put the key in and with the way it's all wired up in there, you're actually causing a short that's going to cook the mechanism, which is bad. Um, I drew up my little thing here. This is. Uh, models of uh, three of the possible keys. So this is what we're calling the blue key because it has a blue LED in it. So there's the LED, this is in the key, and you have a common voltage, so 12 volts in, which will go to through that LED, which is blue, blue key, uh, and out through ground. Uh, and then on this one, going from pin one to pin two, the relay is on the other side of that one in the box. In this one, pin four is not used. Unfortunately, if I were to then take the blue key, and plug it into the orange lock. Uh, it doesn't open anything, which isn't uh, a problem, of course. But now with the uh, the one I have, the pin I have shorted out that was just going to be providing power from the 12 volt to the relay in the other one uh, is now just going from 12 volts straight to ground, which is going to be problematic. In the original conception of this, the idea was to use the LED itself as what's going to continue the circuit. So you have the, the broken circuit with the relay that wants to be fired to open this, and you put the LED in there, and those two pins complete the circuit, and the relay opens. Except that in trying that on a practical level, the relay doesn't open. I don't know enough about electronics, to be honest, to understand the theory of this. Uh, I just know it doesn't work. So I'm now playing with some other stuff to see if I can get that or a version of that to work or an alternate wiring on my paper down here to find something that will work in the lock it's supposed to, not work in the lock it's not supposed to, and not burn anything down. I figured it out. Uh, series circuit, like I'm trying to do with the LED in series with the relay so that the LED is acting as the, the switch that closes that loop. Um, voltage drops. Uh, in parallel they don't do that. I've mostly been doing stuff in parallel circuits and um, the practical side of this I'm getting decent at. The theoretical side, I have no idea what these equations are supposed to look like. But um, right here I have a couple of little uh, five volt uh, coil relays. And um, with my 12 volt power supply, and when I connect my relays in series like this, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but they are both firing. So relays do work in series, but you need enough voltage to run both of them 
um, or enough voltage to run them and whatever else is in series there. So my solution here is get 24 volts, which I don't want to do, or use a smaller relay with a smaller uh, LED such that together they equal, or with resistors and all that, equal 12 volts. So I'm going to put together a prototype of that and see if I can't blow something up. And I think I got it. As I just said, um, in a series, voltage you have to add up to get to your power supply. We have 12 volts to work with, so we're going to do two 3-volt LEDs and one 5-volt resistor, resistor, one 5-volt relay. I'll be adding resistors later. And they are all in series right now, and when I uncircuit this, the lights come out and the relay quits firing. Circuit it up, the lights come on and the relay fires. So that's good. Uh, what this means is that on my four pin connectors, instead of just having the three versions I was going to be able to have with putting stuff in parallel in there, uh, I'll be able to actually do 12 unique keys. So I can go pin 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 2 to 3, 2 to 4, and then 3 to 4, and then all of those same things backwards because it is a light emitting diode and uh, they won't let current go through the wrong way. So it's a win-win and uh, I'm going to start working this into the prototype and uh, we'll see you around. This is version one prototype of the engineer's box, as we have been calling it. And um, but to fix a couple things. I just uh, got some uh, regular, regular, got some uh, 12 volt rechargeable batteries. Uh, it's like an external power pack for recharging your phone or running a laptop, laptop off of, I guess. Um, and those are going to replace the mass of AA batteries that we have in here because those will just be a right pain to change and not last nearly as long. And even with their handy dandy little cover plate in there, players will be tempted to try to tear this off and then get into the batteries even though they're already in the chest and they're not doing anything anymore. Another problem with version 1 is that the magnet, because of where the battery pack is, I put the magnet off center so that you can kind of get a fair amount of pry force on this side even when the magnet is still locked down. So I'm going to move the magnet uh, over to center. I'm going to get rid of the battery uh, access so that'll be all be contained in here. There'll be a plug on the outside uh, so you can plug it in uh, at night to recharge between, uh, between your, your business days. And uh, I'm going to rewire this guy so that, uh, as I just talked about, uh, instead of having the weird parallel thing I have in here that can only have one key that doesn't blow anything up, we can have the, uh, the series thing with the more smaller voltage LEDs and change out. Let me move you out of the way. Uh, get rid of that. Into the guts. Uh, replacing this 12 volt relay with a 5 volt relay that will work uh, when it has the couple of uh, 3 volt uh, LEDs that I will uh, remake the keys with. So we're going to go do that and we'll see you in a minute. I believe I mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to make an actual practical tester for how long a battery actually lasts powering an electromagnet. This here is a 12 volt rechargeable battery. It claims it's got 6,000 milliamp hours or just 6 amp hours. And this here magnet is drawing uh, 120 milliamp hours. Uh, I believe that maths out to 50 hours of use, but I'm really dubious. So what I've got here is a test rig that I've got a binary counter that's going here, uh, counting up right now half seconds. I'm going to change that into 10 minute intervals uh, in a minute once I actually get rolling. So that when the um, uh, magnet uh, turns off or dies, the count stops. And I can check how many uh, intervals of 10 minutes it actually lasted. And I'm going to go ahead and run that now once I update the code. and. Um, Probably not going to bother to time lapse this because it's going to be really boring just kind of watching a binary counter go. Um, as an illustration of how dubious I am that this will actually give me a full 50 hours as the math claims that it's going to, uh, going at 10 minute intervals, I actually don't quite have the uh, five, uh, 50 hours um, on a 256 uh, count there, which is my, my 8 bit uh, counter. So let's see what it actually does. 
It's getting exciting. We have moved it to a uh, secret, secure location, and based on the two lights that are now on, you can tell it's been 30 minutes, and the magnet's still going strong. Let's see if we got another 49 and a half hours in us. For those of you who can read fluent binary, we are now at 24 hours and 20, 20 minutes. 24 hours and 20 minutes. And we're still going strong. Um, at this rate, this battery pack is a viable option for what we're doing, which is good. So at this point, it's kind of just a torture test to see how long it'll last uh, without any recharging. And uh, we'll check back in another 24 some odd hours. Actually, it's Friday, so we're going to check back on Monday morning and uh, just kind of see how far it got. See you then. 11110100, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, which I believe equals 244. I asked Google. That's what it told me. I didn't do the math myself. At 10-minute intervals, uh, that means that the battery was powering the magnet for... About 40 hours and 40 minutes, which though significantly shy of the 50 hours that the uh, 6,000 milliamp hours should have given us, is still plenty to get us through a day and then be recharged overnight. So that's good. That's actually uh, a fair amount farther than I thought it was actually going to last because I've, in doing some of these, I have found that whatever the battery says it has as far as milliamp hours, it's pretty much just a complete lie. Um, you may notice that my little red end state uh, light isn't really coming on. It's, it's, your camera probably can't see it, but it's, it's a little glowing because I forgot to assign uh, pin 13 as an output. Um, so I'm actually surprised it's working at all. Anyway, battery lasts for over 40 hours, which is good enough. Um, actually, way more than good enough. So we are going to install those into the engineer's box, and uh, I'm going to turn two. I'll see you over there. And here we have the completed Mark II Space Box Master 3, 7, th need to catch your name for that. Uh, it's got our, uh, start back here. Uh, that is a 12 volt power jack, so the uh, Game Masters can plug it in overnight and keep the battery charged. Coming around the front here. A red LED will let the players know that there is something to be done that they haven't done yet because the color red just transmits across alien col across. I said it, didn't I? Across alien cultures, uh, such that um, they know it's, it's a no, it's, a, it's the lower wavelength, I think, that does it. And we have the key slot and the key. Boom, key turns blue, opens up. And you gotta put something in it. Uh, that would have been more exciting, but uh, there it is. The uh, magnets have been moved to the center so that you can't really get a good pry on that one. And you got to push them pretty hard to lock it. It's that rubber, that rubber gasket, uh, which helps it pop open. Bam. Makes a nice sound. Uh, we're going to put some more Greeblies on this. Uh, if you uh, go back to our um, scrap mold video, uh, take a look at that. A lot of those things are going to be bolted to the side, painted all metally and with some, some other candy colored blue and red and purples on there to make it all all sciency and s more space worthy space box like subscribe do what you're going to do